Hello all, my name is Jouni Hämäläinen and next I will introduce a technology and demonstrate also energy efficiency and power savings for Nokia 5G core networks and CNFs. When we look at uh, power efficiency and ener energy efficiency for 5G core, uh, we look at multiple topics and methods. And one approach there is that we try to get most out of the performance and energy efficiency of new hardware generations and, and new CPU technologies. And in this context, we are working with Intel and we adopt the new CPU hardware generations to be part of our platforms, to our hardware blueprint, and then we test them along with our applications. And that way we get uh, more energy efficiency, we uh, introduce uh, power savings for the platform and, and for the, the whole solution. The other aspect what we are looking uh, for and what, what we see also is a pain point uh, for our customers that uh, when we have uh, our IMS core or 5G core, or packet core registers uh, deployed on top of a uh, data center, we, we see that uh, data centers, they need to be dimensioned with site redundancy, with zero redundancy, with local redundancy. That is a must have in telecom networks to have a uh, high availability, to have five nines. So that is not a bad thing, that, that, that is a thing that is needed, but that, that uh, makes, uh, yeah, uh, data centers then uh, also uh, dimension that way that there is lots of redundant capacity. But then the, uh, there are also other aspects what cause that there is some unused uh, capacity because the traffic load variates throughout the day. Even during the busy hour uh, uh, there is estimated uh, uh, hardware configuration that considers the worst case traffic and failure conditions. And uh, also these traffic profiles, they may change uh, during festivals, uh, holidays, large events, and all those have to be considered in the data center dimensioning that, that the such spe special events can be uh, well served uh, as well. And then when, when these data centers are built, commissioned, uh, there can be also a redundant capacity for future growth. So it could be that when it is first time built a data center, then it includes capacity for the first year, but also for the second or even for the third year. So because of these uh, different aspects, we see that there is a lot of that kind of uh, unused and redundant capacity within the data centers uh, that we use for our applications. And it could be that uh, even during the busy hour, the server utilization is less than 50%. It could be 30% or 40% during the busy hour. And as you know, then uh, the survey utilization will be even less during the night time when there is less traffic. And it could be that in many cases, our customers have the hardware survey utilization less than 20 or even 10% during the night time. So there is lots of that kind of uh, unused and a redundant hardware server capacity uh, within our data centers for good reason, but that provides an opportunity for us to do that uh, data center power uh, control a uh, more efficient manner. And Intel has actually uh, cooperated with, uh, with, with us a uh, couple of years in this context, and, and we have uh, uh, done lots of that kind of proof of concepts and prototyping for a new power controller that is running on top of Kubernetes uh, nodes uh, that Intel has introduced. And, and that power controller can use that kind of application specific power profile and CPU telemetry to change the CPU core frequency and, and put the CPU core to sleep states. And that way, uh, we see that uh, we can save a very significant amount of power on those hardware servers where we introduce this power controller. Of course, we can monitor then the power consumption today uh, from the hardware servers 
uh, we see that uh, how much each hardware server consumes today and then, then now very recently we have started to plan to introduce also a new software based uh, uh, power uh, metering technology uh, called Kepler. We plan to introduce that uh, to the Nokia cloud platform in uh, 24.7 release and that Kepler then provides the power and energy consumption breakout out per application and even port. And that way we can see the most uh, power and energy hungry applications uh, and, and then uh, components uh, both from the hardware and, and from the software. And then we can start to further even optimize our applications. But uh, this demonstration is focusing on, on this power controller that uh, how this application uh, specific application based infrastructure power manager uh, can reduce the, the power for hardware servers that we use for our applications. And uh, then uh, it happens so that we can deploy along with our applications uh, specific uh, application uh, uh, configured uh, infrastructure power manager, IPM that is able to then control the CPU cores frequency, P states or, or put the CPU cores to micro sleep states and wake up those CPU cores very, very fast manner if, if needed. And then uh, we, we are looking for to deploy this infrastructure manager along with our applications and actually our packet core colleagues are, are planning to introduce this IPM functionality already late this year or, or early next year to be supported in our CMM and CMC products. And then uh, there's a little bit difference whether, whether the application is using SRIOV or DPDK, then that application has to, has to provide the application specific uh, CPU utilization to this IPM over DPDK telemetry interface. But if the application doesn't use the SRIOV and DPDK, then this infrastructure power manager can do the power control on behalf of the application without changing the application at all. This Intel infrastructure power manager requires third generation Xeon processor technology. So in practice, it means the Ice Lake CPU generation is uh, a prerequisite. That has uh, enhanced C and P state transition times with very low latency. So it has to be Ice Lake or later CPU generation. Sapphire Rapids is the one what we are de delivering nowadays, so that is also fine. But if the customer has installed base with Ice Lake, then that that is also fine for this technology. Okay, but now I, I will move for the actual demonstration and into laboratory where I have a remote connection. I will so soon, I have two hardware servers like in this figure. So one hardware server is hosting the Nokia CMM product AMF network function, all its ports, plus there is this infrastructure power manager deployed along with AMF. And then the other hardware server has uh, Nokia CMC product, UPF network function, and again this IPM uh, power controller agent uh, along with our UPF ports uh, deployed. In both cases, we need one vCPU uh, resources for this power manager in addition to regular uh, CNF ports. Okay, but that uh, concludes the introduction for this technology and, and, and then I go for this actual demonstration. So I have a remote connection here to our Tampere VLAP and on left hand side here I have the hardware server where I run our CMM AMF product and then on the right hand side there is the CMC UPF product on, on the another similar Safari Rapids uh, based hardware server. And for both of these uh, 
uh, network functions, we have introduced here 24 hour like traffic profile that is squeezed into 12 minutes. So one min minute corresponds to two hours. And then we uh, run their significant load for that one hardware server, for example, for UPF, we have 100 gigabits per second uh, data pen plane traffic uh, terminated with deep packet inspection to that UPF. And then we have done this uh, traffic profile testing uh, without any power control and then with power control. And here at the bottom, then you can see both for the AMF related hardware server and a UPF related hardware server, the power consumption without any power control. And, and that is this uh, red line here. And you can see that uh, this hardware server and these CPU sockets here, dual socket hardware server, they consume hard, uh, power flat manner during the 24 hour traffic profile. So there is same power consumed during the peak hour, there is same uh, power consumed uh, during the lowest traffic hour during the night time. And this is what what happens also in our customer networks that uh, immediately when our applications are deployed on top of the data center, the electricity bill starts to count. And, and th that uh, electricity uh, is consumed uh, there steadily, regardless whether there is any traffic, whether it is nighttime, daytime, busy hour, same, same uh, power is consumed. And th that is then similar uh, behavior for both control and user plane or for any kind of application. But what we have seen in this uh, Nokia Intel collaboration project and also in this demonstration that once we introduce this uh, Intel infrastructure power manager uh, to those hardware servers and start to control the power, we are able to introduce very significant power savings. And in both of these cases, when we measure the power now, when the IPM controls the power on the hardware server, we see on average 40% uh, uh, daily power savings. And, and you can see also here that uh, when IPM starts to control the power here for the UPF, for example, then the power consumption also starts to follow the actual traffic volume. But uh, it doesn't follow so much what you expected, and that is because all these network functions have these redundant pods, one plus one, n plus k redundant pods. And that means that those pods may have, even during the busy hour, then the low CPU frequency in use, and they are kind of saving energy also during the busy hour. So, so therefore, even with this uh, power control applied, uh, the, the power consumption curve is not so strongly variating per traffic hour. But the main thing is that we introduce here very significant, significant power savings. And we see also based on these tests that this technology is mature and we can start to put this uh, infrastructure power manager as a new feature for our product programs, uh, for our roadmaps and backlogs. And actually our packet core colleagues have started this already. They have this IPM as a roadmap item for CMM 24.11 and CMC 25.3 releases. Okay, but this was the short introduction and demonstration for, for this infrastructure power management technology. So thank you for watching.